everybody. Welcome back to our STEM YouTube channel for Perry Middle School. I am Mrs. Davidson. So glad to see you back. Right now, I'm going to tell you about an event that we've been participating in with our eighth grade STEM class. We've been working on a project called Future City. And the objective is for our students to design a city 200 years in the future. What would the technology look like? How would things work? What would the infrastructure be of the city? And especially focusing on what would senior citizens be like in the future? Well, we're not sure, but they've come up with some solutions and some really good innovations. In the last quarter in STEM class, all of the students have been learning about how to make scale models, studying different types of engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, even fire protection engineering. So they've learned a lot about different careers and they are putting that to use in the, in the city that they are creating. They've built a model and they've even worked on the SimCity game and they've developed some really cool looking projects within the SimCity game. Oh, it was very hard to wake up. Um, I'm usually, it's not, a human should not be waking up at 3.15 in the morning. The last time I was at school at 4 a.m. was for the D, uh, eighth grade DC trip. It was pretty hard. I woke up at 3 a.m. Kind of like, you know, fell back asleep, but it's all good. We practiced our presentation a lot. We originally created a script for our presentation, and then we moved into using note cards, and then we're almost completely independent of those note cards. We will definitely be practicing our presentation on the bus. We've got three free hours, so why not? to the Future City Competition in Groveport, Ohio, which is right past Columbus, just north, south of it. We are freezing, it is very cold. We just stopped for breakfast at, yes, of course, McDonald's. It's gonna be a great day. You're gonna hear a lot about what's happening later, but right now, we're gonna go get something to eat. Oh yeah, did I tell you that we started at four o'clock this morning? That's when we left school. We are now at Eastland Career Center. That's in Groveport, Ohio, just south of Columbus. We got up really early to get here, and our presenters are now being judged based on some specialty topics. Welcome back to the atrium at Eastland Technical Center. We are engaging in a building contest, build the largest freestanding three-dimensional structure out of PZ, PVC pipe. And as I lay here in the street, I see what I need. I need escape from this debris. Get
mayor. It's disturbing. Yeah, I'm not really sure if that's the best poster for you, Max. Although you are a great civil engineer, ever since Mr. Ite, the biomedical engineer and billionaire who made the city possible, and I, our city's chief civil engineer, worked with you on that project, the WID, we realized how great of a civil engineer you are. And being both engineers ourselves, we realized the importance of having an engineer in a political role in our city. That being said, you could use a little help. So, how much do you know about the city? Do you know what Signora Paradisi means? I think it means elderly paradise. Yes, it means elderly paradise in Greek. Do you know any history about the city? I think it's called Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's right. Back then in 2017, Chattanooga, Tennessee had a high crime rate and the downtown area was a dump. But now, in, but as you got into the suburbs, you had a great place for retirement and lots of recreational space. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that. You, every mayor, good mayor candidate should know the demographics of the city. Back in 2017, we had a population of only 178,000 people with only 14.7% over 65. Now, in 2217, we have a population of 11.62 uh, million people with 76% over 65. So the majority of the voters would be from seniors. So since seniors are going to be the majority vote, you should know some problems they faced in the past. Back in 2017, it was hard for seniors to drive, walk, or fly. This led to seniors being less healthy and less active and living shorter, worse lives. And, good, and of course, good senior living was very expensive back in 2017. So we had to improve our transportation system, healthcare system, and our energy production. Since I'm the chief civil engineer, it only makes sense that I explain the transportation systems. So over here, we have our Hyperloop hub, which is for long distance transportation. And it's a hub for very fast Hyperloop trains that travel through vacuums. They travel at about 750 miles per hour. And they allow our citizens to travel long distances very quickly and efficiently without using much power. Senior citizens can also utilize this because seniors who are unable to fly due to the pressurization of airplanes can still travel long distances quickly. Max, why don't you explain the WID to our guests, our mid-distance transportation system. The WID is a tri-level transportation system. It has a highway for our electric self-driving cars on top. This is great for seniors who are impaired. Our second level, we have an electric monorail for much traffic. All right, bottom we have a moving cross, uh, crosswalk like, um, um, for areas that are too far to walk or too much of a hassle to take on uh, the monorail. So for short distance transportation, we've created two unique solutions. One is exoskeletons for our citizens. So our exoskeletons are designed for people who are injured or very old and struggle to walk and get around the city. This, they are issued by the medical department, so that way every single citizen who needs one is serviced and, allow, and have allowed seniors to be more active in our city. We've also implemented smart crosswalks for our citizens, which communicate with our citizens' smart watches, which tell the crosswalk how much time our citizens need to cross. For instance, a biker is probably going to need significantly less time to cross than an elderly senior citizen. And now, Dr. Joe, our city's chief biomedical engineer, to explain some of the biomedical advancements we have made in our city. Thank you, Ethan. Nanobots created at the Eddy University Research Center can travel through the bloodstream and can do many things. Their main purpose is to modify the individual's DNA to slow the effect of, of aging, such as wrinkling and general degeneration of health. This works because every time your DNA splits and creates new cells, your telomeres are worn down. This leads to aging. Our nanobots are able to almost eliminate this by restoring telomeres. This also has allowed um, us to eradicate ge genetic diseases such as Alzheimer's. It has also increased the average age of death to 179 years of age. One trade-off of the new technology is that the population has increased and we could have food shortages. To counterbalance this, we develop more advanced greenhouses and growing techniques. Thank you, Dr. Joe. Here's our agriculture zone where we implement those advanced greenhouse techniques. One of those is multi-trophic aquaculture. And that's when you grow plants and fish in the same water and use the feces of the fish as fertilizer. This has allowed us to produce lots of lean meats and produce for our citizens and has allowed them to eat healthier than ever. Here's our industrial zone where we manufacture a lot of our city's advanced technologies and this provides the basis for our economy as well as we produce majority of our power here and store it here as well. For our power grid, we have an independent power grid, so we are less vulnerable to attack. That's an upside of this. One downside of this is that power cost varies more from city to city because cities are starting to transition to this independent power grid. Although, because we have such advanced efficient methods of generating green power, our cost is quite low. For generating power, we have our hydroelectric dam, solar panels, and windmills. Although these methods are more traditional, we've figured out that they're the most green and efficient, but the main thing we had to work on 
was our batteries, and we made them more efficient so that way when the sun stops blowing, or when the, sun, when the wind stops blowing and the sun stops shining, our citizens still have power. We made them more efficient so they can store more energy as well as greener because back in 2017, batteries were very harmful to the environment. This is our commercial area. This is a building where I used to work at with an engineering firm. This is our mixed use zone that combines retail, recreation, and commercial. This is our uh, recreational zone. And this is Edit University where I studied to become a civil engineer. Edit University is the best university for engineering in 2217. We, the university works closely with our hospital to create new technologies for um, for our citizens. And here we have our recreation zone and it, we split it up into three parts. Our senior district, regular housing, and high income housing. Each, in each zone there are easily accessible recreation er, recreational areas so our people can be more fit and more active. Wow, thank, thank you guys very much. I've learned a lot. I've learned that the majority of the population are senior citizens and the Dr. Ed has brought an amazing nanobots to our city and our city has an uh, amazing independent green power grid. I've also realized that I, that I can do the design process the same ways at work as an engineer in my campaign for mayor. I think we did very well for uh, how, how we uh, had our city made and our presentation. The kinds of questions they asked me were, uh, well, how does your infrastructure system work? Uh, do you have any features in your city that benefit senior citizens that you didn't talk about? And do you have any, and do young people in your city still get serviced well even though you have so many senior citizens? Uh, some things I thought I, we did well was we, we did a great job of executing our presentation. We should have a decent job at some special awards due to our research. And overall, I think everything went well. The judges mostly asked us questions about how we help senior citizens in our city. I think we um, did very well at staying under the allotted time limit. And one thing I could, we could do better is using less non-words like um and like and stuff like that.
Hey everybody, we are back at Perry Middle School. It has been a great trip, good success, and everybody's ready to go home now. It is dark. We left in the dark, we came back in the dark. Have a great night. Be sure to like us, turn on your post notifications, and tell a friend about us. We'll see you next time. Oh, <laughs>